about a half a million years after the Big Bang, the cosmos began to cool. As it cooled, the hot subatomic particles that constituted the early universe began to slow down and stop colliding with each other long enough so that protons, neutrons, and electrons could form. The universe cooled further and the hot particles slowed further still, allowing these particles to stay together long enough to create atoms. The universe was nothing but a cloud of hydrogen and helium. Over eons, the universe continued to cool and structure begins to present itself within this universal cloud. From small disturbances woven into space-time, the galaxies begin to collect. Tiny variations in the primordial universe become the web that collected galaxies and gave the cosmos its form. These galaxies become distributed along these structures, dancing within their gravitational fields, forming giant tendrils reaching out across the span of eternity. Just a few short decades ago, astronomers thought the universe was static and unchanging. We didn't even know there were other galaxies until the 20th century. The heavens was considered a place of constancy and uniformity. The stars and planets were always there, and they always would be, steady and unchanging. What we have learned instead is that the cosmos is a seething cauldron of activity, as alive and vibrant as any one of us. Stars are born, shine, and explode. Stellar winds blow huge storms of gas across interstellar space. Black holes devour all that they touch. Galaxies collide with each other, spraying stars into eternity. And space-time itself grows larger by the minute. The universe is far from a static place, and we are intimately connected to it. As giant stars explode after living out their lives, they stream out the elements of life. Carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, iron, all the necessary components for planets to form and for life to begin. We are more connected to the universe than we know. The stars are our ascendants, and we are their progeny. <laughs>